this week, I believe we can offer what amounts to a world exclusive, the kind of analysis that we try to deliver. I think we can deliver some today. And it revolves around the great questions of war and peace, specifically Syria, the Assad government, once again uh, threatened by warmonger elements here in the United States, uh, in particular by those bankrupt and uh, stupid parts of the intelligence community who were so focused on their hatred for Assad that they neglected other more serious threats coming from this uh, attempted Tamer Lane operation, right? Timur Lang, we can read uh, Christopher Marlowe's version of Tamer Lane, Tamber Lane the Great, uh, how a very small force can, under conditions of social breakdown, become a real threat. Anyway, those bunglers are still at it. Here's what it comes down to. We warned you that Republicans are warmongers. Republicans are warmongers. There are no significant exceptions because they're all appealing to the same warmonger, bigoted, racist base. That includes little Rand Paul. That includes Cruz. That includes every one of them. They all have to be warmongers because otherwise they cannot compete and they want to compete. So there it is. So here it is. We warned you. We ran a whole campaign here. Arrest McCain for ISIS. Hashtag, right? Do it um, sharp, right? Sharp. Arrest McCain for ISIS. Diezus. Arrest McCain for ISIS. Okay. Uh, and now what do we get? The Republicans win uh, significant gains in the recent election. And what happens? Within 10 days, you're back on the brink of war. This is what it comes down to. Now, the leading edge of this is a report coming from Ed Royce. And, of course, Ed Royce is the Republican uh, chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, chairman of the United States House Committee on Foreign Affairs since 2013. This guy represents the reactionary precincts of Orange County, Anaheim, <laughs> Fullerton, Ed Royce. So he appeared on CNN's New Day, New Day. Sounds vaguely Freemasonic, wouldn't you say? New age, new day, mm, doesn't sound so good. But uh, in effect, uh, this is this is the program with the son of Cuomo, Cuomo's son, the younger son, not the governor, but the other son. So Ed Royce appears on the uh, on the CNN New Day, and he says there is a policy review involving Syria going on. According to Ed Royce and a couple of other unnamed sources cited by CNN in a wire on Thursday, the 13th of November, President Obama has asked his national security team for another review of the U.S. policy towards Syria after realizing that ISIS may not be defeated without a political transition in Syria and the removal of President Bashar al-Assad, senior U.S. officials and diplomats tell CNN. That is a cabal. That is a warmonger cabal attempting to carry out a warmonger coup. The review is a tacit admission that the initial strategy of trying to confront ISIS first in Iraq and then take the group fighters on in Syria without also focusing on the removal of Bashar Assad was a miscalculation. This is all from unnamed sources. Then we get to the heart of the matter. Representative Ed Royce, 
chairman of House Foreign Affairs, said Thursday morning on CNN's New Day that he had also heard that the White House was shifting its strategy in part because Turkey, Turkey and other Gulf states, which are hosting refugees from Syria, were pushing for the removal of Assad. Now, look at this situation. Obama was in the Far East, still is in the Far East, right? Going from the APEC meeting in Beijing with uh, President Xi of China, with Putin, going on then to Burma, Myanmar, for a meeting of ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and currently on his way to Australia for the G20 in Brisbane, Brisbane, Australia. He's traveling, as far as I can see, with Susan Rice. Kerry, warmonger Kerry, skull and bones Kerry, is traveling in the Middle East. And indeed, there was this big thing uh, yesterday, I guess it was, on the Thursday of this week, that Kerry was meeting in Amman, Jordan, with King Abdullah of Jordan and Bibi Netanyahu, who I, I'm sure he brought his Bibi gun, since he's Bibi. So uh, that's not a very promising group either. I'm afraid Jordan has degenerated into a kind of a satellite of the Mossad. Uh, not much more to be said about that. But we're left then with this idea that there's not just a policy review, but a policy review with a very definite angle. Time to bomb Assad. That's what they call a policy review. Forced through such a policy review. Now, fortunately, uh, this has then been denied. And this was also um, a couple of hours later. Looks like it was about 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, the 13th of November. Here we have Ben Rhodes. <laughs> We've crossed uh, swords with this character in the past. Deputy National Security Advisor. So Susan Rice's right-hand man, and uh, he's traveling with... Uh, the president, maybe Susan Rice is actually back in the White House. I have to track down some of these things. However, he says the Obama administration is not, repeat, not formally reviewing Syria policy. So here's what uh, we then get, not just Ben Rhodes saying this stuff, uh, but a senior administration official, official, had told the network the following, quote, developments on the ground have caused the national security team to collectively conclude that we may not have time for Iraq first. <laughs> this official goes on to say, in an ideal world, you will drive ISIL out of Iraq and pivot to Syria. But by if by then the moderate opposition in Syria has been smacked and ISIL is still there. That doesn't help. So, and once again, the report about the policy review suggested that the U.S. could implement a no-fly zone, a no-fly zone against Assad's forces, or accelerate and expand the train and equip program. But Rhodes says no, no. Back in a minute on World Trade. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, and we've got a scoop. I think we're the only analytical operation that has figured this out. I'd like to thank my good friend J.C. of the Proletariat, um, also famous on Twitter under various uh, screen names. J.C. of the Proletariat helped uh, figure this out. Um, so remember now, we've got all of these leaks going to CNN, not just to CNN, but to Elise Labat, Elise Labat. We hear Elise Labat from time to time on National Public Radio Friday morning, Diane Rehm show, International Policy Review. She seems to be a creature at the State Department attached, 
opportunistically to uh, Madame Clinton and now to Skull and Bones uh, Kerry. So we've had this senior administration official saying, who knows who this is, Kerry or Rice, I would guess. We have to, we may not have time for Iraq first. Now, the issue is a no-fly zone against Assad's forces. <laughs> well, that's a huge air campaign against Syria. This is, of course, what Erdogan of Turkey and his sidekick, Davutoglu, have been demanding. And the answer to that is no, no, a thousand times no. Rhodes then asked, what is the real story, says senior advisors have indeed been looking, and I'm quoting, looking at what relationship is, what the relationship is between the actions we're taking against ISIL and the political transition. But then it's much softer on Assad. Ben Rhodes, deputy to Rice, says he would not rule out, quote, he would not rule out the prospect that you could defeat ISIL absent a political transition within Syria. In other words, it's perfectly feasible to defeat ISIL without overthrowing Assad. Rhodes says there have been regular meetings, we're, we're aware of about four in the week of the elections, the previous week, first week in, in November. Rhodes acknowledged that there have been regular meetings with the president uh, where Obama has joined in with his national security team on the um, issue. Rhodes says, clearly no one is satisfied with the situation in Syria as it stands. We haven't been uh, happy with that. We're always going to be taking a hard look at what more we can do to effectively degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL and then have a transition to a stable Syria. Okay, certain degree of double talk. Rhodes, of course, designed the uh, television coup against Assad in um, the summer of 2012, July 2012, attempted decapitation of the uh, regime of, of uh, Assad. Now, uh, what could the trigger for this be, right? Why now with this stuff? Well, <clears throat> on the one side, Republicans have gained power, more members of the House, indeed more, more members of the uh, Senate. Is, can we look at Royce and say he's a satellite of McCain and Lindsey Graham and the Amigos and Kelly Ayat, that clique, warmonger clique, quite quite possible. Um, the other thing, though, is have we reached a threshold of effectiveness in the U.S. bombing of ISIS and similar terrorist groups, right? Enemies of civilization all the way, nothing to be done but uh, the use of force. Very sorry. This is the way it is. Uh, regretfully, but this is the way it is. And they've been, of course, they've been created by the U.S., Saudi Arabia, NATO intelligence, but it's like Hitler. Once the Frankenstein monster is coming at you, you've got to do something about that. 